Good morning. Um, happy Sabbath to everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for joining us in the last day of the Youth Week of Prayer. I want to welcome our new new joiners and our old joiners. Um, our opening hymn is going to be 181, Does Jesus Care? Jesus care when my heart is faint to deeply for mirth and song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the say after this scripture reading we're going to have three prayers in between the prayers there'll be a song played hear our prayer O lord good morning church i will be reading from mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 42 and i will read in your hearing and they came and referred to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him if thou wilt thou canst meet me clean and Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. 
and as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Good morning, child. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for life, health, and strength, and for the church family and friends. I also want to thank you for moments like this, where we are able to come together to worship you despite of COVID. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to be more faithful to you and help us to grow spiritually and develop a closer relationship with you. Dear Lord, I ask that you will help us youths to always strive for excellence and to be more motivated in our studies so that we can develop and also be successful in our education. Lord, please guide us in the right path so we will choose the right friends, ones who will be of good influence to us throughout our lives. Help us to put more focus on you, Lord, and not on the worldly things that are temporary. And give us wisdom, Lord, to know what is good for us. Help us to depend on you as we seek to have new beginnings with you being the center of our lives. Please, Lord, give us the courage to be brave as we go through life. Help us to stay positive and focused so that we can achieve great things and help us to always believe in ourselves as we, as you guide us through this journey. I ask that you will be with our families and loved ones who have helped us both in good and bad times. Please keep us all faithful, Lord, and have mercy on us even in this trying time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you for keeping us safe, especially in this modern time as the world is experiencing the pandemic. Father, we thank you for life and we thank you for the opportunities that you have given to us so we can live for you each day. Lord, at this time, we ask that you will forgive us, forgive us of our sins. And as your word says in Psalms 51, verse 10, we ask that you will create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. Lord, at this time, we put before you uh, the families in the church. Uh, the family unit is under attack. We pray, dear Father, that your love and your light will shine through our homes and in all the difficult circumstances that we may face. Uh, let us invite the Holy Spirit to dwell in and to guide our decisions and our daily activities. Lord, at this time, we also like to hold the youth up towards you and ask that you will guard their hearts and their minds from temptation and from the things that will distract them. And I pray, dear Lord, um, that the youth will choose to serve you and choose to put you first and that they will take to heart the many promises that you have given to us in your word. I pray and ask, I pray and ask that you will endow them with knowledge of you and your word and that you will help them to find joy to find love and to find peace in you and that they can share this joy um, with their peers 
and that their lives will be a living testimony to you. So Lord, we ask that you will hear and answer our prayers. And if there's anything that we have failed to ask, Lord, we know that um, you will um, you, you will grant unto us the things that we need for our benefit. So for this, we ask, dear Lord, you will hear our prayers in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Father who art in heaven, blessed is your holy name. We give you thanks and honor, and all the glory belongs to you. We thank you for the many blessings bestowed upon us, though we are not worthy. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died, that all who believes in him will live. Jesus said to his disciples, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We do believe that offer is also extended to our young people. And so, dear Lord, we pray a special request that they too should come unto you. We ask that the Holy Spirit speaks to each and every one of them, inviting them to draw close to you. Through the written word, they can see that you love them all and want them to follow in your footsteps so they can resist temptation as you did. We pray that they will heed the Holy Spirit as he speaks to them and guides them as they journey through this life. Help them to accept and believe the scriptures and so be converted to follow you. Let their faith in you increase and the reliance on self decrease. Father, we present to you the speaker of the hour, Sister Vickers. She is your obedient servant and a willing vessel. Use her to speak here to your people who are in desperate need of you. Let your words be heard and not hers. Bless her too as she continues to minister to the young people and that she will continue to trust in you. For all that we ask and need, please grant these things unto us. In your holy name we pray, amen. afternoon and happy Sabbath to those online and those on YouTube. Our speaker, as uh, Monty's giving away now in his um, prayer, <laughs> is none other than Marla Vickers. Um, mm. She's one of our young, one of our young members, but not as young as some of the others. That she's probably one of the oldest, older, older, younger member. She's preached before, um, and from what I can remember, it was good. She's a committed youth leader. 
and as it's um, the closing youth week of prayer, it only seems seemingly that she ends with her message to um, each and every one. So, but before that, uh, one of our other young up and coming musician is going to render us with a musical item, Tyrese. The other song I'm going to be playing is called I Will Follow Thee.
Amen. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to my team and thank you to Tyrese and Tiana for preparing that special piece for today. I also want to say um, welcome to everyone who's viewing online. Um, I know that some of my family is here with us today as well. So I'm very happy and grateful that you all could join us to today's service. As mentioned, it's been the Youth Week of Prayer for this year. And last year, we really didn't get to have a sermon. And I was planning to speak then, since it was my first year in the leadership position. Uh, but unfortunately, lockdown happened. and. There was no, there was no, um, there was no Youth Week of Prayer and I did not speak. So this year I made sure that it would happen, <laughs> regardless of what may come. So before I start to speak, let's have a little word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your church and to those who are watching online. I pray, dear Lord, that someone will be touched today and that your name will be honored and glorified. Use me, dear Lord, as your vessel and speak your words through me. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, leprosy is a disease that leaves a person visibly disfigured. And sadly, those who have it would eventually die from the disease. It is also contagious. Touching a person with leprosy mean you would have it too. Those who had leprosy would have to make themselves known for people to avoid them. It is an alienating disease. And we can understand that feeling today, not being able to see our family and our friends freely. It is a very difficult time for us all. Let me take us back to the scripture reading that Aisha read wonderfully. This time, I want us to visualize this moment. I want us to see clearly this moment written in scripture. I want for us to relate to the leper, reason being we have our own deadly disease that we need to cure for too. Now Mark 1 verse 40 to 42 says in the New Living Translation. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him, and said to him, I am willing be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leper, leprosy left him and he was clean. Now imagine, as the leper speaks, if you are willing, you can make me clean. His voice trembling with anxiousness for fear of rejection. Can you see him kneeling on the ground in his ruggedy old clothes, his eyes watery with the last glimmer of hope in them? Can you hear the wind blowing as Jesus takes a moment to look the leper's face? Imagine Jesus' warm smile and stretching out his hand can you see Jesus takes the leper's right hand, pulling him up 
and saying to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Now, living in a time where we would like to hug our friends and family, and for those living on their own, it must be really difficult for them. It is important to take note of what Jesus does first in this meeting. Experts say that hugging or touching someone on their shoulder can help to make them feel more relaxed. When Jesus touched our leper, who was seen as unclean, that, that touch was so important to him, it meant that he was accepted by God. This moment shows us that Jesus is willing to touch us, no matter if our sins are visible or not. He is willing to touch us. We can see the leper on his knees in Mark 1 verse 40. Can we now try to see ourselves in his place? James 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James is telling us to draw near to God, just like the leper who saw Jesus outside the city and took the opportunity to approach him. He was wanting to be healed from his leprosy and instead he got more than what he bargained for. With James 4 verse 8 in mind, let us picture the scene again with us as the leper. Now, imagine as you see Jesus to enter into the city, you run up to him, then you fall on your knees your hands opened wide, you say, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Your voice trembling with anxiousness for fear of rejection. Your burdens heavy on your back. You're in pain. You're feeling deep guilt. You want to be free from it. Can you hear the wind blowing as Jesus takes a moment to look you in the eyes? Imagine Jesus' warm smile and stretching out his hand. Can you see Jesus takes your right hand, pulling you up and saying to you, to you now, I am willing, be cleansed. Unlike the leper, whose sin was made visible for all to see, we have our own deadly disease. Though it is not visible to the eye, doesn't mean it is not there. Romans 3 verse 23 verse 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that comes by Christ Jesus. This deadly disease I am talking about is called sin. We can hide it deep within us. We can look beautiful to others and even touch them and not pass it on, but within we are dying. The effect of sin is that it makes us feel cut off from God. It makes us feel as though we are not good enough for God. So why bother trying to please him? Our sins make us feel as though we can't go to God. 
it makes us feel that we are not worthy. However, Jesus is willing to touch us, to free us from sin. We all have had this experience. When we have done something wrong, it eats at us and we're scared to own up to it. With Jesus, he is willing to understand our struggles, our guilt, and our deepest desires. He wants to reach out and touch us, just like how he did with the leper. With no judgment, we can go to him no matter the sin, but are we willing to do that though? Are we really ready to let Jesus touch us and transform our lives? Romans 8 verse 38 and 39 is one of my favorite texts because it shows me how much God is willing to fight for me. For I am persuaded Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is saying in this text that no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what amount of wrongs we have done, no matter the kind of trouble we find ourselves in, no matter what sins we have caught up in our hearts, Jesus is there with us. He is ready to touch us, to give, to save us from sins and the consequence that is death. This is what Jesus gives to each of us when we look at when we look to him. He gives us hope and strength to endure whatever struggles with sin we are having. There is hope that is in Jesus, whoever who overcame sin for us. Jesus is our cure. There is no other. Have faith in him who overcame sin for you and for me. In closing, we cannot let the disease of sin eat away at the bright future we have with Jesus, our savior. If we turn to him, he is willing to free us from the deadly disease that is sin. And in doing so, giving us hope for a better tomorrow. I want us to remember these texts Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James 4 verse 8. Even when you don't feel you can still draw near to Jesus, he is there for you. Psalms 25 verses 4 to 5. And I'd encourage us to have this as our daily prayer. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truths and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all the day. God is love. First John. 4 verse 8 
any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 8 verse 39. Never forget that he stands in front of you waiting to touch you, waiting to free you and to renew you, to fill you, to give you, to guide you, to strengthen you, to empower you, just like the leper. Jesus loves each of us and has compassion on us at all times. Just as the leper who was unclean by society, but so loved by God, that is us today, loved by God. Let us draw near to Jesus. He is willing to save us from our sins. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'd like to thank Sister Marla very much for that message of hope and consolation. It is a challenge for each and every one of us that Jesus is willing. And the question is, are you willing? Are you willing to give yourself to him? Are you willing to trust him? This is what we're told in John chapter 6 and verse 37, that anyone that comes to Jesus, Jesus promised he will not turn you away. Anyone, it doesn't matter who we are. You know, it doesn't matter where we have been. It said, if you come, I'm not going to turn your way. This leper, Eve was turned away by society. He was put out of his home. He could not mix with his family. He was isolated, just as you and I are. And many times our very sin makes us isolate from our family. You know, our own family will turn us away because of things we have done. And what Jesus is saying in John 6, 37, if you come to me, I'm not going to turn you away. And therefore, in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, he warned us, uh, he said, look here, cast your cares upon me. Whatever it is that you've got, cast your cares. I'm not going to turn you away. And it goes for both adults and young people. We don't have to be guilty in the sight of God because we come to him and we say, Lord, I'm sorry, here I am, take me. And God promised to take care of us. And so I'd like to invite all of us, whether you are baptized, whether you're not baptized, whether you're thinking about getting baptism, baptized, you know, whether or not you want to know Jesus as your personal Savior. I'd like to invite all of us to, as we sing the closing song, God will take care of you, that you make, think about your position and ask the Lord, take me to, do something for me, because you know the desires of my heart. So I'm asking us whether, what position we find ourselves in, let us ask him to come in and to take us to, as we sing our closing song, God will take care of you.
about closing prayer, I'd like to invite everyone. You know the legacy that is in your life. You know what it is that is preventing you from drawing closer to God. And therefore, I'd like to invite you just to bow your head, whether you're, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in your home. You know, it doesn't matter what walk you have had with God. I'm inviting all of us at this time, for those on YouTube and those on Zoom, to just bow our heads and to invite the Lord in. This leper, he asked him, you know, and I'm willing, and Jesus said yes. And the same way he spoke to this leper and said, yes, he's speaking to you today. And he's saying yes to you too. That yes, I can make you whole. I'm willing to, I'm dying to actually. So let us just bow our heads and go with this confidence that Jesus wants to make you better. Let us bow our heads. Loving kind Father in heaven, thank you so much for your message of hope to each and every one of us. Thank you, loving Father, that you have sent us the message through your servant. She has spoken to us, it has touched our hearts, and we know that you want us badly. In a few weeks' times, many of us will be looking at what we call Easter, and we will be celebrating up in our feast. But Father, I'm asking that as we do so, we will remember why you died for us. 
that it was because you want to make us clean. You want us to be in your kingdom. You want each and every one of us to know you for ourselves. And so, Father, you know us here. You know what our struggles are. And we are hoping that you will hear our prayers, hear the deepest desire within each and every one of us. And so, Father, we thank you for your mercy and your goodness in our lives, and that you will give us the strength to overcome and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Marla, for your message to us. Thank you for reminding us what God wants to do. Sometimes we forget that God is here with us and he wants to clean us up. Sometimes we think we have to do it on our own. But you're providing us today that, you know, God wants to do that for us. We cannot do it on our own. So thank you very much. And we pray that you will continue to allow the Lord to lead and to guide you in everything that you do. Not just for today, but always. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.